I'm Crescent Dragon Wagon. We're in Eureka Springs, Arkansas, in a room that has had many incarnations. Um, we are talking on November the 9th, 2011, back in the late 80s. The room that we're in was in a little farmhouse that was across the way from the house that my husband and I lived in. And it's a long story of how we came to have the opportunity to buy it, but we did. And it had three little rooms, and this was one of those rooms. It was a sort of, this was the living room, that was the kitchen. And it became, over time, we renovated the little house, and it became the first bed and breakfast inn in Eureka Springs, one of the first two in the state. And uh, this, at that time, there were only two guest bedrooms, and then this was, again, a little dining room and a little separate kitchen. We later made it into a suite, um, you know, with a bathroom inside. So this was called the Tulip Room, and it was the last of the three rooms we did at the farmhouse. We was me and my late husband, Ned Shank. And um, we're here because this is about to be sold, which will generate much needed cash flow for the next phase of the writer's colony, which is what grew out of Dairy Hollow House, which was our country inn. So this is not quite as it was when it was a um, inn. It's not quite as it was when I left, which was in 2002 when I left the colony, but I, I, we just wanted to, to archive it um, so that we could remember a little bit of what it was like. And here are some of the things that I see. I designed this funny little um, uh, layered bed ruffle. This tulips, my mother is Charlotte Zalatow, a children's book writer and editor, and when she was at Harper and Row, they gave her her own imprint, and her logo was a tulip. So this room was more or less named after her logo, hence the red, the lipstick red against the walls. I helped strip and pull nails from each one of these boards. These are the original boards here. And um, these, we came up, since these rooms were so tiny, we came up with these little tiny closet things and had somebody built them for us. And some of the art around here, there's the cover, there's one of the pictures from one of my kids' books, Your Owl Friend. And in there, um, and if, if we're able to get into that far corner, um, there's the, a poster that was done from my book, Home Place. And that poster always belonged in this house because if you can see it, the... Um, the frontispiece of the, and of course Jerry Pinkney, the illustrator, knew nothing about this, but they show layers of wallpaper. And our original house had, you know, we took off layer after layer after layer of wallpaper and we saved some of each so that there would be a record, an archive kept. My late husband was a historic preservationist and archivist. Um, we were so tickled to find this little wood stove. It's a beaut, it's called a Merritt Darling. And boy, did it make this area hot. It was too hot as a bedroom, but for the period of time when it was a kitchen and um, uh, breakfast room, it worked really well for that. And so uh, at some point we went ahead and we added that bathroom there and we added a jacuzzi. And... Um, that is some quick takes. There were wonderful, wonderful curtains here that looked almost, they had, again, that layer of layer of layer of different colored fabrics. They were like some grand dress that you could square dance in and would swirl around you. And they're long gone, but they were made by a lady named Leanne Curtis, who lived in Eureka Springs for a long time, and who is now a, a Facebook friend of mine. And they were a lot more interesting than these little green curtains. And um, this chair here has been reupholstered time after time after time in its original incarnation. It was five dollars and I bought it at an auction. And after he auctioned it off, the auctioneer had one foot on the chair and I said, Hey, 
get your foot off my chair. And <laughs> the whole auction crowd cracked up and he cracked because it just paid five dollars. But it has been upholstered and reupholstered and it is such a comfy chair. And so that's a few things from here. This poster of the May Fine Arts Festival, that was the first May Fine Arts Festival. And they asked me to volunteer to do the publicity and PR, and I did. And I have a notebook of all we did. And that was the first idea that Eureka Springs could be a fine arts place, not just folk art and um, primitives. And, you know, that, so that was the first moment, that was the first time that happened. And I do have that notebook waiting to go to somebody. Now over here, I don't know how far back they go. Oh my goodness, we have, these are room diaries from people that stayed in the rooms when it was before a writer's colony. And um, hmm, this one is dated in the 90s. And people just talked about what it meant to them to come here and be away from where they were and be part of it. And people used to say to me, I just feel so creative here. <laughs> I never set out to have, I have set out for it to be a good experience as an inn, but people saw it in those different ways. So that's the tulip room. I'm sure that a lot of my DNA is embedded in the wood walls and in the doors. I spent a lot of time stripping the doors. A guy named Misho did this beautiful, um, what do you call it? Should you know what it's called? Engraving? Uh, well, it's sand, sand blasting. Um, and I remember thinking a lot about the word welcome, which we use all the time, but welcome. And that's the Dairy Hollow House cow, originally designed by Jacqueline Froelich. The cow is, you know, with its head turned, and that cow comes out. Dairy Hollow was this little valley because in the days when um, milk was still locally produced and delivered, this was all the dairies in Eureka Springs, there were two or three family-owned dairies. The last dairy was still extant when I moved up here. Mrs. Ethel Real milked eight Jersey cows by hand twice a day. And if you were lucky, you got on her milk list and you had your assigned time to go up there. There's a big gallon jar with about that much heavy, thick cream on top and a twist of wax paper underneath the screw lid. And she was a beautiful lady, and she had the only phone in the hollow. I would walk up and go use her phone. And so, that's, that is the tulip room.